Alright folks, welcome to another video by Lucas Clones. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video like this and uh, that is simply because as I said in my previous video that I posted i uh, just been busy. Uh, every free moment that I have I've been uh, using to work on figures and so it's tough to get to doing a video but I am trying to get back into the swing of things and so what I'm going to do today is I have a video of some of my recent work not all of it of course uh, but just a couple of projects that I'm currently working on so without further ado let's get right into it uh, this figure here that um, you're looking at is a Mandalorian and um, he's kind of a figure that he's kind of come out of nowhere. I just kind of had the parts for him laying around and uh, I kind of threw them together and it's coming together really nicely uh, with a little bit of added sculpting and you can see the sculpting here on the helmet that I'm doing. Uh, the type of material that I use, if you haven't heard me say it before, is called Aves Fix It Sculpt and it is a material, it's a two-part epoxy uh, clay and it's particularly, I'll show you what it looks like, it's a two-part epoxy like I said and it's made specifically for um, people who want to sculpt. It has a four hour cure time and it's uh, used by other customizers. Uh, some of you may have heard of, of uh, Sithfire 30, um, Incoms Customs, Luke Spywalker, and so forth and so on. Uh, they all use Aves Fix It. There's many, many more besides that. Uh, those are just guys that uh, I always have on the top of my head and they're also friends of mine so uh, I think of them uh, first and foremost, so that's who I uh, decided to name. Um, and it's because of them that I started uh, to get into sculpting. Um, and on that note, while we're talking about this, uh, I want to uh, say that I am going to Celebration 6. Uh, I'm only going for one day, and the main reason why I'm going is because there's going to be a first ever customizing panel at Celebration 6. Uh, uh, you know, hosted by Lucasfilm, and uh, my friends Sith Fire 30 and Luke Spywalker are going to to be on the panel along with uh, a fellow by the name of Siloff, who is a very successful customizer, um, who is heading up the whole uh, customizing panel. He was the one that was contacted by Lucasfilm personally and asked to um, put together the panel. The panel is going to be 45 minutes long, and it's going to be basically a rundown of the history of customizing as an art form, and I am going there to cover it for Custom Action Figure News and for Imperial Shipyard. Some of you may know I'm a uh, moderator on imperialshipyards.net, which is a great site for customizing. If you're looking into getting into customs, I highly recommend that you go on Imperial Shipyards and look around. Um, and think about joining up because there's a lot of great guys on there like Luke Spywalker and Sith Fire 30 and many many others who not only post their work on there but are answering your questions uh, if you ask them the super nice guy so it's a good place to go and get in on the community of customizing anyhow back to my custom here so I'm not sure exactly where I'm going with this other than I want him to be sort of like a heavy armored Mandalorian um, I'm really happy with the sculpting here um, and I'm thinking I might go for a, a whitish grayish near arctic color scheme. I'm going to uh, dremel down these gauntlets here and get some different hands for this guy and I'm going to custom sculpt in some gauntlets because I, I, these are Neo Viper hands. I don't really like those particularly. Another figure that I've done that I'm really super proud of uh, is this guy here. You'll recognize him immediately. And this is the Joker. Uh, and um, the head I, I is actually, I may, may or may not believe it, but it's actually a Rise of Cobra Zartan head. Uh, and I heavily re-sculpted it, obviously, the mouth and the hair. You can tell I sculpted it. I also re-sculpted the nose and the brows very, very subtly. Very proud of this custom. I think it turned out fantastic. 
Um, also, I I dremeled down the this is the Cobra Commander Rise of Cobra body. I dremeled that down till it was flat on his chest and stomach area to, to sculpt the um, collar and waistcoat, which is in tie, which is sort of uh, covered up there, and made him his gag gun. I made him a, a, a Uzi. Well, it's not an Uzi. My son knows the, what it's called. I have to ask him. With a custom strap on it. And he also comes with a case. And um, I put it on Facebook to my friends and uh, asking what I should put on the case. I painted the Joker's portrait and they said nutcase. And I think it was either my buddy Cyclone's customs or maybe it was uh, my other buddy Darth Optimus. This was actually a couple months ago. Each canister of Joker poison has another mini portrait of him on there. So anyhow, that's another custom that I did. He's pretty cool. I actually want to make a couple more Jokers. I have it in mind to do... This one was a commission piece um, that the customer has yet to claim. Uh, I want to do one of the, those just like that one for myself. And I would like to do a Heath Ledger movie version Joker. Here's a clone trooper. Haven't been doing too, too many clone troopers lately. Uh, this is probably the, one of the last few that I did after my big wave three, which I have yet to post a video of. But this one was one I did for myself, and it's a uh, Jungle Commando Scout, or or Keshi Commando. Um, the gauntlets that you see here are hand sculpted. There you go. And on the helmet, the this portion here, and this here were sculpted on. I think that's all the sculpt work I did on that. But I was pretty happy with them. I kind of was going for a sort of like an arc trooper slash cash cheek trooper look to him. And I used parts from a AOTC clone trooper, Captain Fordo, and the shadow clone trooper or shadow scout trooper from the clone commandos. Oh, and I sculpted this back here. Clone commandos. Uh, Battle Pack that was a Walmart exclusive a few years ago, 2009, I think. Lots of projects here, too many really to get to. I'm working on a crossover Firefly Boba Fett uh, figure. Just a, just got him bashed right now, um, but he'll be pretty cool once I paint him up. Gauntlets are being customized. I'm probably gonna do a little sculpting on him as well. And um, I think that's going to do it for this video, but I think I'm going to do this as a two-parter and I'm going to show you a few more things, so stay tuned for part two. Alright, this is Lucas Clones. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Alright folks, welcome back once again. This is Lucas Clones. Uh, this is the part two video, uh, and I had a request uh, from my last video uh, where I showed you my studio and talked about the Facebook page group that I created. Um, the request someone saw my Grendel in there and wanted me to do a video on him. So I'm going to do Grendel here, but I'm going to squeeze a few other guys in. So this is Grendel Prime. And if you're not, a lot of, some, some people are familiar with who Grendel is. A lot of people aren't. Um, he's kind of a, a semi-obscure comic character. I'll show you the comic book got it back here. Um, this is the comic book here. It's called Grendel War Child and I've um, had this comic book for a long time. And um, it's a great book. And I, I, I really was uh, attracted to the character of Grendel because he reminds me a lot of my favorite G.I. Joe which is Snake Eyes but as you saw on the cover there, he also has sort of like a lightsaber thing, so it also tied in the whole science fiction Star Wars theme. And and um, if you've never, if you don't know anything about Grendel Prime, he's actually a, a sort of like a cyborg, very loyal guardian type character, but also like an Avenger. Um, not like an Avenger, like the Marvel's Avengers, but like you know he goes out and avenges the deaths of people or 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 what what have you. 
And I made an attempt a couple of years ago to try to make a Grendel Prime, but this was before I was uh, sculpting and had built up a little bit better skill with the craft of customizing, or the art of customizing, as I like to say. And also, I didn't have quite all the parts available to me that I do now, so I decided to kind of salvage that Grendel project and, and take another stab at it. And this time around, I think I nailed it. And so what it is here is this is Grendel Prime as you see him in the book. And if I get the book, I'll show you a panel so you can see how he was inspired by the book. So here's a really good panel. And you can see there's Grendel on sort of like a, almost like a speeder bike, but it's not. Uh, there's a little bit better close up there and um, he's got sort of like this poncho looking thing on him and uh, he's wearing this all sort of like black body armor outfit which is really cool looking with sort of like survival gear around his waist and you know weapons and whatnot um, and of course his I don't know what they call it in the book, uh, I guess lightsaber or, or is not the proper term, but anyhow, most of the pouches that are on this belt I sculpted. There's a canteen that I sculpted. I'll try to get it in focus. There you go. There's a canteen. Uh, some of these are Warhammer or G.I. Joe. That's a G.I. Joe. I think that's actually a canteen too. This is an Indiana Jones from the Raiders of the Lost Ark uh, a holster with the pistol. The body is all uh, Rise of Cobra Snake Eyes, aside for the boots. The boots are from the pant blousing down, are a 25th anniversary Firefly, and then I sculpted the armor plating on, on top of that. So, a little bit more sculpt work there. The head is a Rise of Cobra Paris Pursuit Snake Eyes he um, head, but obviously I chopped off the visor and then I filled in his eyes with the sculpt and re-sculpted the whole front of his face to have that more... Grendel almost has kind of like a, a Spider-Man type mask, but it has this piece of armor plating over his mouth and nose area here. So I sculpted that on too. And that was pretty much it. And a little bit of paint here and there, and voila. I do have his lightsaber thingy, but it fell down in the cracks behind my drawing board back here. So I'm going to have to pull my table forward to get it out and, and have time to do that before this video. The thing that I'm most uh, happy with on this figure is the soft goods. Th this this type of soft goods here that I have, and I've used it on my clones for commas, custom commas as well, Commander Ply for one, um, is simply something called unbleached muslin, which is basically, uh, it's like the same thing that your bed sheets are made out of, but it hasn't been bleached, because cotton actually, when they weave it, it's not pure white, I don't know if you guys know that or not, but it actually has sort of like this tawny straw-like color. And I got this material from my mother-in-law uh, trying to make commas, and I just thought it was perfect. So the this is all functional. You can see his hood will go up, and his hood will go down. I can actually take his hood off, and there's a piece around here that's actually a scarf. And it looks kind of raggedy. It's supposed to because in, you see in the book his, his poncho and hood are very, very worn and weathered. And actually I did add a little bit of painting to this weathering. Now, you can see that it's frayed, but this won't fray anymore. What I do is I actually seal the edges of the, the cloth so that it won't fray with my Model Master. Whoopsie. Model Master acrylic sealer, flat acrylic sealer, and that kind of like glues the, the edges so that now they won't they won't fray any further. So all the fraying that you see on the back and around the edges is all intentional. I wanted it to look like that. If I didn't want to, I would trim it and then seal it, but I want it to look like that. So he's supposed to look dirty. He's traveling through the wastes. I won't tell you any more about the story in case you decide to track the book down and read it. But so that's Grendel Prime. 
pretty pretty happy with that guy all right and uh, so I guess that's gonna do it for this video um, but uh, I have one more figure that I would like to review for you um, and it's a biggie so stay tuned uh, for the next video alrighty bye bye